when I got back from LA, something was telling me either I quit this shit now and chase what I'm doing like all the way, or I stay here and just never get it. I feel like someone's just pulling me back. And that fear of being stuck in this position again was just more, it, it fully motivated me to just say, yo, I'm about to just do this shit. Fuck it. And it was honestly November 1st. I got back and it was like, yo, we here. I think it was like a month before my project dropped. So yeah, that's as soon as I decided. Any fear now? Nah, nah. I'm talking about I wake up some days and I don't need to be stressing. I, ne I never stress. I don't have, like I don't, I don't have fear that this isn't, like I know this is gonna work out. I'm almost 100% certain it's gonna work out. I think there may be 1% chance that it don't work out is the fact that like, I don't know, I tweet some dumb shit and they cancel me forever. But outside of that, I'm pretty good. But I'm, I'm, I'm really certain this is gonna work out. I'm really, like, I feel good. I don't feel no fear at all. So even when I was finishing up the first one from the heart, uh, I already had an idea where I was going with the second one. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be similar in length and shit like that. But uh, this next joint is about to be crazy, so Very, very crazy. Different vibe, different energy, but it's definitely gonna rock just as much as the uh, From the Heart Volume 2 did. Cause I, I was just happy people was fucking with it for real. That's yeah, my whole thing, man. It like, connected. Literally, that's all I wanted, bro. I put literally all my shit into that. I just was like, hey, bro. Even even just the way I, even, even with the whole Best Buy shit, cause I worked on that whole shit while I was at Best Buy. So yeah. I was just like, hey. So this is your first album, but it's just you album. working yeah. as an artist. Just working as an artist, that's yeah. Why. Yeah, no, this is crazy, bro. Like. I recorded a lot of From the Heart shit uh, in my career, and I got a lot of that shit mixed, but now I find myself recording drafts and shit, and then actually going to the studios and kind of shit's fixed, which is crazy as hell to me. But you know, it's just quality gotta be top notch. When you got shit like this, what can you, what can you do? <laughs> what can you do, bro? My name is Chris Patrick. Uh, I'm from East Stars, New Jersey, and my occupation is I'm a rapper. I do rapping things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A couple months ago, when you asked me that question, I was not a rapper. I was working at Best Buy. Twitter in the pandemic was the best thing in the world because it really forced you to go in there and say, all right, let's uh, see who's out here. Byri was definitely one of the people I met. Uh, I saw her do a cover to Givy. Uh, it wasn't even Givy. I was Drake Chicago freestyle. Mm -hmm. She did Givy on part. And I said, oh, this shit fire. Mm -hmm. So then I hit her up for uh, two of the songs in there. And then Dende, too, I... Same same thing. He was doing some shit down in Texas, going very crazy. Hit him up too, and was like, "Yo, get on this with me." And then from there, we just all been homies. Like, we've been close. That's crazy. Yeah. Twitter crazy, bro. Twitter is the plug. Twitter is the plug. Twitter is the plug. I feel like my hardest thing for me now. I'm trying to disconnect from this shit as much yeah. as I can now, because yeah. it's like pandemic is. Because now, sucks you in. Yeah, bro. It's nasty. It's nasty. It's nasty. And, and you spend a lot of time on that too. <laughs> Right, it's, it's annoying, bro. You get you get on there for two seconds. Two seconds turns into two hours. Now you now, now you're sitting there for a couple and days. Now you didn't miss hella shit, right?